In this lesson, we want to discuss the midpoint formula. All right, so over the course of the last few lessons, we've been talking about the coordinate plane and various related topics. So we already talked about how to find the distance between two points. We talked about finding if three points are the vertices of a right triangle. And we talked about how to determine if three points were collinear, again, meaning they lie on the same line. So now we want to talk about how to find the midpoint or the middle of a line segment. So first and foremost, let's clarify what we mean by a line segment. So a line on our coordinate plane extends indefinitely in both directions. So you'll see on the coordinate plane here, I've graphed a sample line. And most of you work with lines in your Algebra 1 or Intermediate Algebra course. But in case you haven't, we'll get to lines in a few lessons. For now, we just need to know that, again, lines continue in each direction forever. That's why we have an arrow at each end. So this guy right here and this guy right here, again, that's just telling me that the line continues indefinitely in each direction. So because of that fact, we're not going to be able to find the middle or the midpoint of a line. But what we can do is we can find the middle or the midpoint of a line segment. Okay, So a line segment is just a piece of a line. It's going to have two endpoints. And so because it has a defined length, we'll be able to find the middle of it, or again, the midpoint, okay? So the midpoint is just the point that is equidistant, which means it has the same distance, okay, from the endpoints of our line segment. So again, just to be clear, what this means is that the midpoint will cut the line segment completely in half. So from the midpoint to one endpoint is gonna be the same distance as from the midpoint to the other endpoint. So if we look at our graph here, you're going to see that we have three plotted points. So let me erase this. And you'll see that we have a plotted point here and here and here. Okay. So for reference sake, let's label these using A, B, and C. So I'm going to take this point right here. I'm going to call this point A. And this is going to be at negative 5, comma, negative 6. So point A is at negative 5, comma, negative 6. And then I'm going to call this guy right here. This is going to be B. Let me write this down here just so it's a little cleaner. So we'll put B down there. So for point B, this is going to be at 0, comma, negative 3. And then this guy right here, I'm going to call this C. So C is going to be at 5, comma, 0. So what we're going to see here is that B is going to be the midpoint for this line segment that's made up of from A to C. So from right here to right here, this line segment, if I kind of draw that in, what's going to happen is B is going to be the midpoint. So right here, if I just kind of cut this down like that, you'll see that the distance from A to B and the distance from B to C, that's going to be the exact same distance, okay? So how can we find these coordinates in general, right? The coordinates of the midpoint. Well, let's go down and we'll come back up. All right, so I just want to show you this on a clean graph with no numbers involved. Basically, we're going to derive our formula. And you're going to see once you have the formula, this is very, very easy. So suppose we have two known points. So we have two known points. And this is usually the scenario where you're trying to find the midpoint. You know two of the points. So let's call them x sub 1, y sub 1. And we're going to say x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay. So again, these points are known. Then what you don't know is the midpoint. So the coordinates for that... For the midpoint, we're just going to say this is x comma y, okay? So you see I have this labeled on the graph. So this is your x sub 2, y sub 2. This is your x sub 1, y sub 1. So these are the endpoints of our line segments. And this guy right here, this x comma y, this is your midpoint, okay? So again, think about what this means. If I draw like a little vertical line here, you could say that the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here, right? So it cuts it in half or it's the middle. Now, how can we mathematically determine what the midpoint is? Well, if I think about how to find the x value here for the midpoint, just think about this mathematical fact. If I kind of come up here and say this x value here to this x value here, so the x value for x sub 1 and the x value for x, the distance there would be the same as the distance from this x to kind of this x value here for x sub 2, okay? Okay. So those distances would be equal. So mathematically, we can set up an equation that says that x sub 2 minus x is the same as or is equal to x minus x sub 1. Because again, those distances are equal. From here to here 
is going to be equal to or the same as from here to here. Okay. So let's just go ahead and solve this equation. And you'll see that we derive the x value for the midpoint. Okay. So x sub 2 minus x equals x minus x sub 1. So what's unknown here is x. So we want to solve for that. So the first thing we want to do is get all the x's to one side. And I know it's confusing here because you have a lot of different notation. But basically the x sub 2 and the x sub 1, that needs to be on one side. And all the kind of x's need to be on the other side. So I'm going to subtract x sub 2 away from each side of the equation. And what's going to happen is this would cancel. And I'm also going to subtract x away from each side of the equation. So that's going to cancel. All right. So what we're going to have here is that you have negative x minus x, which is negative 2x. This will be equal to, you're going to have negative x sub 1 minus x sub 2. Okay. So how can we solve this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative from the right-hand side. So I'm going to write this as negative 1 times the quantity x sub 1 plus x sub 2. Okay, so all I did was I factored out a negative 1. If I went back through and said negative 1 times x sub 1, I'd have my negative x sub 1. And if I did negative 1 times x sub 2, I'd have my negative x sub 2. Okay, so I didn't do anything illegal. Then over here I have my negative 2x. And now I just want to solve for what's unknown. So I want to solve for this x right here. And the way I'm going to do that, since I'm multiplying by negative 2, I'm just going to divide by negative 2. Okay, I'm going to do that to both sides. We kind of make that better. So what's going to happen is this is going to cancel. And I'm going to just have x on the left-hand side. And this will be equal to on the right-hand side, you can cancel this negative 1 with this negative here. And you're going to have that x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. So this is how you find the x value or your x coordinate for the midpoint. So we're just basically finding the average of the two x values. If we go back and we look at these two endpoints, so you have A and you have C. So A has an X value of negative 5. C has an X value of 5. So if I add those two together and I divide by 2, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. 0 over 2 is 0. So look at the X coordinate for the midpoint. It's 0, right? We can see that right there. So that's how that was found. So let me erase this. Let's talk about the Y value. So for the y value, it's going to be the same concept. So what's going to happen is if I kind of draw a line going over here, so this guy right here, this y value, this is my y sub 2. This y value right here, this is my y. And this y value right here, this is my y sub 1. So this guy is known and this guy is known. And again, we know that the distance between here and here and the distance between here and here are going to be the same. Okay, so I can do the, basically the same thing. And I can say that y sub 2 minus y is equal to y minus y sub 1, okay? And when we solve this, we're going to see the same thing, right? We basically want to take the average of the y values. So let's subtract y sub 2 away from each side of the equation. And let's subtract y away from each side of the equation. So we know that this is going to cancel. We know that this is going to cancel. Negative y minus y is negative 2y. This equals, you're going to have negative y sub 1 minus y sub 2. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to factor a negative 1 out from the right side. So this would be negative 1 times the quantity, y sub 1 plus y sub 2. Over here, I'll have my negative 2y. And when I solve this, I just divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. And so this is going to cancel with this. I'll have y is equal to the negative 1 cancels with the negative here. You have your y sub 1 plus your y sub 2 over 2. All right, so again, this is just the average of the y values. So if we go back up, so if I wanted to find the y coordinate, this negative 3 here in the midpoint, I would take my negative 6, the y coordinate of A, one of the endpoints, then add to that my 0, the y coordinate from C, another endpoint, and I would just divide by 2. Okay, so negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And so that's how you get this negative 3 right there. Okay, so a very, very easy formula to kind of come up with. We would say that capital M... So capital letter M, not lowercase m, that's used for slope, is equal to, we'll have x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2, then comma, you have y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2, okay? So this is how you can get your kind of coordinates for the midpoint. Very, very easy. You're just taking the average of the x values. That's how you get your x coordinate. And then you're taking the average of the y values. That's how you get your y coordinate. Okay, so very, very simple. 
Now, if we really wanted to prove this, we could calculate the distance between A and B, and we could calculate the distance between B and C. And again, if we've correctly found this midpoint as B, then the distances will be the same, okay? So I'm not gonna do that in the interest of time. I'm just gonna tell you that the distance between A and B is the square root of 34, and the distance between B and C is also the square root of 34. Okay, so this is a way you can check this. The distances are equal, so we know we've found the correct midpoint. All right, let's run through a few examples real quick. So suppose you had two common negative six and eight common negative one, and you wanted to find the midpoint. Well, again, all you need to do is label one of the points as x sub one, y sub one, and the other is x sub two, y sub two. And all we're gonna do is plug into our formula. So capital M, okay, capital M is equal to, you've got x sub one plus x sub two over two, and then comma, you've got y sub one plus y sub two over two, okay? So if I plug into this guy, x sub one is two, so m will be equal to, you're gonna have a two plus, your x sub two is gonna be eight, okay, and we're gonna divide by two. And then for the y, you're gonna have y sub one, which is gonna be negative six, and then plus your y sub two is gonna be negative one, so you might as well do just negative six minus one. Okay, and this is gonna be over two. So two plus eight is 10, 10 divided by two is five. So this would be five. And then negative six minus one is gonna be negative seven. Negative seven divided by two. You can just write negative seven halves if you want. So you can say this is negative seven halves like this, or you can say negative 3.5 if you want a decimal, okay? So this is gonna be the midpoint, five comma negative seven halves of these two kind of points this line segment that they form. So from two comma negative six to eight comma negative one. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have negative four comma negative 13 and five comma nine. So again, we wanna find the midpoint. So the midpoint formula, capital M is equal to, you've got X sub one plus X sub two over two. Let me make that better. And then comma, you've got Y sub one plus Y sub two over two. Okay, so if I label this one, just kind of change things up as x sub two, y sub two, and this one as x sub one, y sub one, and I just plug into my formula. So M, capital M for midpoint will be equal to, you're gonna have your x sub one, which is five, plus your x sub two, which is gonna be negative four. So five plus negative four would be five minus four, which is basically just one, okay? Then over two, so that's one half, then for the y coordinate, you've got y sub one, which is nine, plus y sub two, which is negative 13. So you might as well say you have nine minus 13. So nine minus 13, which is negative four. So you're gonna have negative four, then over two, so over two, and negative four over two is gonna be negative two. So my midpoint is gonna be at one half comma negative two. All right, let's take a look at one more of these, and then I'll give you a different type of problem. So we have 11 comma seven and nine comma two. So again, our midpoint, I'm gonna put capital letter M is equal to, you've got your X sub one plus your X sub two over two, comma, you've got your Y sub one plus your Y sub two over two. Okay, so let's label this as X sub one, Y sub one. Let's label this as X sub two, Y sub two. Again, just plug into the formula, very, very easy. You've got capital M for midpoint is equal to, for your X, you've got, x sub one, which is 11, and x sub two, which is nine. So 11 plus nine is 20. So you'd have 20 over two, which is just 10. Okay, so this is 10. Then comma, for the y value, you've got y sub one, which is seven, and y sub two, which is two. So you've got seven plus two, which is nine over two. So the midpoint here is gonna occur at 10 comma nine halves. And if you wanted a decimal form for nine halves, you could just do 4.5. All right, for the last problem we're gonna look at, we're gonna know the midpoint and we're gonna know one endpoint, but one of the endpoints is gonna be unknown, and that's what we're gonna to try to figure out. So our midpoint is gonna occur at five comma one, and then the known endpoint, I'm just gonna label this as x sub one, y sub one. This guy's gonna occur at negative six comma negative three, and the unknown endpoint, we just have x sub two, y sub two as kind of a stand-in, okay? We don't know what it is yet. So again, if I plug into the midpoint formula, capital M is equal to, you have your X sub one plus your X sub two over two. Let me make that two a little better. And then comma, you have your Y sub one plus your Y sub two over two. Now, let's think about this for a second. 
we know that the x value here for the midpoint is 5. So I can take this guy right here, this x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2, and I can set it equal to 5, right? Because if I knew what x sub 2 was, I know what x sub 1 is, but if I knew what x sub 2 is, I could plug in here and here, and I could evaluate, and I should get a 5, okay? So let's use this to kind of get our unknown value. So I know that x sub 1 is negative 6. So I know this is negative 6. So let's just solve this equation. Let's multiply both sides by 2. Let me kind of scroll down and get some room going. We'll come back up. So I'll multiply this by 2. Let me kind of scooch this over just a little bit. And I'm going to multiply this side by 2. We know that this would cancel with this. So I would have negative 6 plus x sub 2 is equal to 10. And to solve for x sub 2, I just got to add 6 to both sides of the equation. And so what I'm going to have is that x sub 2 is equal to 16. Okay? So let me erase all this. So again, my x sub 2, I'm just going to put a 16 right there, okay? And you can verify that's the case because 16 plus negative 6 is going to give me 10. 10 divided by 2 would give me this value here of 5, okay? So that does work itself out. Now, if I want y sub 2, I'm going to use a similar procedure, okay? So I know y sub 1, so I'm going to say that negative 3, that's y sub 1, plus my unknown, which is y sub 2, divided by 2 would be equal to what? It would be equal to 1. So if I multiply both sides by 2, let me kind of scooch this over just a little bit. Again, if I multiply both sides by 2, so multiply this side by 2 and this side by 2, well, this is going to cancel with this. I'm going to have negative 3 plus y sub 2 is equal to 2. Let me kind of scroll down just a little bit. Let me add 3 to both sides of the equation so that I can isolate y sub 2. That'll cancel. You'll have y sub 2 is equal to 5. Okay, so very, very easy. Let me erase this. And we said that y sub 2 was 5. Okay, and you can verify that. Negative 3 plus 5 is going to give you 2. 2 divided by 2 is going to give you 1. So we know that this is correct, right? Our unknown endpoint here, our x sub 2, y sub 2, is going to be 16, 5. Okay, that's what we're trying to find.